Hey, 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 everyone. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's Busiest Music Nerd. Hope you're doing well. And is Billie Eilish an industry plant? Quickly, before we get into this video, I do want to mention that our uh, Cal Chuchesta black metal t-shirt last week that this is available. So if you want to get this, hit the link down below. International shipping, unisex sizes. You can even get it a uh, baggy Billie Eilish size if, if, that's, uh, if that's your vibe. Is, is, is the California singer, pop artist, an industry plant. The closer that we get to the release of Billie Eilish's new record, the larger the conversation about whether or not she's a label-controlled puppet, is she someone who has a faked origin story, is she inauthentic, the larger I see this conversation get. And if we go back into the earliest years of her career, we can see that she uh, has multiple songs that are either written by or co-written by her brother. She has family members who are actors and industry connected. Before she had that much music out, she was signed to Interscope Records. Currently, we are being inundated with all of this press, all of these interviews, all of this media exposure that somebody so early in their career doesn't typically get. I'm not totally sure why. Maybe it's because of decades of, of marketing artists in this way, but there's kind of this unhealthy expectation amongst music listening audiences that uh, the, the bands and the artists that they listen to, they have to be authentic and relatable and maybe have a, a captivating origin story, maybe even go through this like rags to riches progression as they succeed in the music industry. Like they're just a regular person living their regular person life. And then one day out of just like a passion for music, they start recording and they just start randomly dropping tracks on the internet and then they just blow up. Oh my God. And for whatever reason, this expectation is like inordinately applied to music. Like nobody's looking at Bradley Cooper in A Star is Born and saying, hey, wait a second, this guy's actually not a country guy. He's he's the son of a stockbroker. I mean, yes, there are musicians who I have covered on my YouTube channels that I love, that I think are great, and they come from working class backgrounds, and they have grinded their way into a music career, but honestly, most people who I know who are in that position, in the grander scheme of things, they're still relatively obscure. It's more the rule than the exception in my experience that when I meet musicians in the industry, they have uh, some family who are musicians, or they have some family who are industry connected, or they came into the game with quite a bit of inherited wealth. And you have musicians who do their best to uh, kind of hide that and avoid that conversation. And you have dudes who honestly, uh, like Vampire Weekend, you know, being uh, from the Ivy League cloth has kind of been their whole aesthetic. And look, having quite a bit of money is not exactly the same thing as like being directly industry connected, but when you consider how much time and effort and outside help and yes, even money that building a music career from scratch can take, having the ability to dedicate yourself totally to making and recording music without having to worry about things like buying food or paying the rent. It's its a luxury not everyone can afford. The likelihood that someone from a lower or lower middle class lifestyle is going to have the means to learn music on their own, buy instruments, buy a computer, buy editing software, pay for time in the studio, do all of this stuff without outside help, without a label, without succumbing to the economic pressures of just existing, yeah, the chances of all of that are low, even if you're just doing like a, a little lo-fi indie rock thing. So yes, there are a great deal of musicians in the industry through either having proximity to the industry or quite a bit of money before getting into the industry, they do have kind of a leg up. But honestly, I don't really think it means that much in terms of their long-term popularity, because even if you do make it to the top, it's still a sink or swim situation. I am hit with PR emails and pitches all the time in my inbox and through other corners of the internet too, uh, from artists and musicians who come from backgrounds that are actually not too unlike Billy's. And a lot of them just don't have the songs or the sound or the look or the album they come out with is just a dud. So being an industry plant or coming into the game with 
quite a bit of advantages, it doesn't necessarily guarantee you a career. People have to like your music. So being placed into the limelight by the industry doesn't necessarily take away from your artistic abilities or the artistic abilities of the people that you work with, nor does it prevent you from being relatable. Uh, in my opinion. Because if you were to ask me whether or not Billie Eilish is relatable in the broadest sense, I would actually say yes. I think she is relatable in that she is navigating this whole fame thing as well as nearly any teenager thrown into it would. And I've said this before in videos, and I'll say it again in this one, but this whole industry plant term, this label, it is a recent term for something that has been an industry standard for a long, long, long time. Because for decades, record labels have been scouting talent, have been pairing musicians and bands up with songwriters and co-songwriters, have been handing them songs from other people, and have also had session musicians come in and play all the instruments on whatever record the band is putting out. From the world-class <laughs> look them up to 2019, that's pretty much been the standard. Yes, there are pockets of the music industry where that is not the case. You're talking about uh, more of the punk bands and hardcore bands out there and so on and so forth. Yes, there are independent musicians out there. Yes, there are DIYers out there who are just totally doing their own thing and you can't control them and you can't direct them. They're lone wolves. But listen, for the most part, it's not in the label's best interest to foster that kind of stuff because while it is great that labels do their best to, I guess, if an artist kind of blows up out of nowhere and they have an organic following and people really love their stuff, uh, you know, jump in there, try to sign them to the label, hand them a big fat contract. But here's the thing. If you have have a giant following that you can basically take anywhere, uh, the label is entering that conversation from a position of, of weakness. The label is most likely going to make more money off you if they can hand you a dinky contract before you're famous, before you're popular, and they can essentially control your ascent upward on the ladder of popularity and basically own you right from the start. So is Billie Eilish an industry plant if we were to go strictly by the kind of vague standards for what being an industry plant is, uh, yeah, pretty much. But still, by those very same standards, you could lump the Beatles or the Clash into that same category because they, as well, were very heavily groomed on their way up the ladder by the music industry. Some of the most popular and beloved music out there is uh, really more top-down than it is ground up. But honestly, at the end of the day, really what's going to matter to me is whether or not Billie Eilish's new record is good. And that's going to mean quite a bit to her fans, too. I mean, I know there are some hardcore stands out there who, uh, uh, would just love to hear her burp into the microphone for like 45 minutes or whatever. But ultimately, as a musician, Billy's music is going to be what defines her. Because here's the thing, while the magazine spreads and the outfits are cool and nice and cutting edge and, and all that stuff, uh, there are going to be people, I would say, you know, at least 7 to 10 to 20 of them every few years who can easily replace you on that front. There's a, a rotating door for people who can fulfill that role. It's really whether or not Billy's music withstands the test of time. That's going to truly decide whether or not are we going to care about her and her music five years from now? The last thing that I want to say is a lot of the conversations around artists being industry plants, at least from as far as I can tell, uh, seems like it stems from uh, either this uh, exaggerated sense of fairness amongst the audience or maybe even uh, like a subconscious awareness of general inequities in society, thinking that uh, if an artist is signed to a label without that much of a following or exposure or because of connections they had, uh, that you didn't earn that, you don't deserve that. <sighs> and, you know, maybe maybe in a certain sense that is, that is correct and that is true. However, you know, if, if this is something that truly, truly, truly bothers you, um, I would encourage you to maybe look into how, <laughs> I guess, uh, economic inequities affect other parts of society in much, much, much worse ways other than some person whose music that you don't really care for all that much, I don't know, having a hit record. So I think I'm going to leave it at that. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Uh, Anthony Fantano, Billie Eilish, and Industry Plants forever.